Hello and welcome. This is me old friend from film school days, Mark I, David M. Kraken. Hello. Savviest of viewers might remember him as Michael Bay. Yeah, my hair snow wig this time. Yeah, with the dollar. Yeah, whenever in the nostalgic days of earliest and least effort. Sweet, young, lovely, beautiful, Michael Bay. But I still have the Michael Bay thing that I hold to this day. You were actually one of the first Michael Bay apologists I think I ever met. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, because coming to film school it was. You know, everybody likes their auteurs and you and I both said we like helicopters at sunset. Yeah, helicopters at sunset. So we bonded, yeah. I asked David to come on so we could talk about screenwriting and micro-budget filmmaking because he is in the very last processes of finishing his solo directorial feature film, Bullet County. Ye. Yeah. It's not something we can erase. I saw Ali in there, in all the wet ferns and moss. Is blood black in the moonlight? Can you give us the, as we were taught, elevator pitch? Elevator pitch. The power drill pitch. The pitch that you have to go in between drills. Ye. Yeah. Ye. Yeah. It's basically... It's an action thriller that is about four friends on the Kentucky Bourbon Trail in the 70s. They re trying to relive the good old days. They did the trail ten years ago in college. And so one of them's getting married. So his best man says... Hey, why don't we do it again and actually finish it? Because we did not finish it last time. But there, along the way, they discover that there's buried prohibition money out in Kentucky somewhere. So they go looking for that. And as is wont to do with characters finding money, you know, they start getting greedy and tearing each other apart and that kind of thing. But it's savory. I mean... The term gets thrown around a lot, but it is very Cohen Brothers -y in terms of it's funny. It's a black humor. You know, you get some moments of violence. And so we the kind of pitched it as the shining meets no country for old men. Right now they re running a Kickstarter. Can you give it us the sales pitch? Ye. Yeah. So the Kickstarter is for finishing funds. So, like you said, we re pretty much done. But the Kickstarter is to get us final color correction, you know, final vux and that kind of thing. So, like we re having a poster done by Akiko, who did it follows and blue ruin, and that kind of thing. So, it's, it's basically to help us complete the film, which we actually have just successfully funded. But now we re trying to get to. I think $50,000, so that all backers who contribute $25,000 or more will get a blue ray off it. Ye, yeah. so it's, you know, like anything. As you remaking a movie, you budget out for certain things. And then you realize some things are more costly. So hence finishing funds and kickstarters and that kind of thing. What was your budget originally for the actual shooting? Was your or for production only? That one I don't to know. I think we were trying to aim for the whole movie to be about two hundred thousand dollars. So the idea was pull as many favors as we could initially and for production. And we always knew that Kickstarter was a big possibility, as for a lot of indie films it is. But this one we thought we would treat to, if we were going to do our Kickstarter, to do it at the end so that we actually had something to show for it. Instead of, you know, a lot of Kickstarters are the potential for a movie. You know, help me get it off the ground and the movie you most likely want to get finished or even started because it ends up costing more all the complications so we thought if we got through production got through editing got it far enough along to where it had to be completed then the kickstarter made more sense to incentivize people well 
I guess that's a sort of the thing, though. I feel like movies are more sure if they re indie Because you hear all these horror stories of studio movies that even get greenlit and maybe even start production, and then you re like, no, you can't. Yeah. I think a lot of it must be passion or some kind of drive on the part of the filmmakers. If they really want to get it done, they all pull out all the stops and they all work on it for as long as they possibly can to get it finished. Well, you have to. I mean, it's so thankless and it's so competitive. I think maybe that's true in all arts, but not to demoralize, but it's just like it's so crowded and it's so hard to even be noticed. Yeah, that's why I think a lot of it has to do with, honestly, talent. I mean, there's business savvy and there's that kind of thing, but it really is hoping that you can put together a strong enough team that all cares about the project enough to bring it to fruition, and you know, take a hit on their paycheck or be willing to live in a house. And in this case, in Indiana and Kentucky, which is where we shot it because it takes place in the Bourbon Trail. But, you know, to kind of really on people's passion for the material, you know, or passion for power drills. I think that's a really underrated subject. Yes. How did you find your crew? You know people that actually give enough off a shit to go through the hell of low-budget filmmaking. Well, there was a long brainwashing process when he put them in a dentist chair. The drills reminded me of that. Did you have like the idea drops? I am drops. Yeah. But, yeah, it was actually a combination of things. One of them was us initially. I did what was called a 546. You did a 547. I did a 547. Yours was the non-fiction. Mine was the fiction. Ye. Yeah. I did a documentary. Ye. Yeah. Ye. Yeah. So on that one, I had a really good crew on that, a really good cast. And so after working on that, I took the lead actor from that, wrote a feature for him, and that from that. And then through other channels at us, from professors and that kind of thing, just really, while I was, you know, fully employed elsewhere, we were putting together this movie, and I was just taking meetings and meeting people through other, you know, us channels, friends of friends, friends. So, I mean, a lot of it was trying to find that nice Van de Graham of passion, but not too crazy, but crazy enough to want to leave A for a month. I just noticed you have a yes ring. I do. You know, I got this because you know. Did you get a class ring? No. I didn't, either because they re like $700. Yeah. I was like, I know it's University of Spoiled Children, but come on. Yeah. So my day off graduation, the day off walking, we went to the bookstore. And you know, there's all the class rings and stuff. And I saw this for like $40 or $50, and I thought, I will get this, and it all basically be me wedding ring to my debt. So when I pay off my debt, I'm going to throw this into Mount Doom and get rid of it. Yeah, so it always reminds me. So it always...
So, actually, that kind of brings me to another discussion point, which is, like, Ivy talked on this channel about film school before. Yeah. That was with a colleague who went to a more vocational school, whereas I had gone to Busk, and I had, at the time, at the time, I was a dropout. Now I'm a graduate almost. Yeah. But I give us now the question of film school, would you say it was worth it? Yet, you know, I think about that a lot every time a credit card gets hit with more debt payments. Every time your credit score gets down because your debt is so ballooning. Ballooning? It's like a tick. Ye, you can tear down the principal. You re just paying off interest. You don't really know what you didn't to know so you don't really know how much you learned or were absorbed. And it's also about the relationships. Like, we wouldn't have met. I wouldn't have met any, like, the people that worked on this movie. Like, anybody who worked on this movie that I even met, you know, three people removed from Musk, I wouldn't know. So this crew would be completely different. The cast would be completely different. This crew is like, it's a racket. Yeah, that's right. I went there. I sent me kids. I really shouldn't have filmed in an aviator. That was a bad call. But the beauty of nature. That's right. Those errant planes, they re just pterodactyls. Yeah, no, this is like, your movie was shot outside mostly. This is outside. I like nature. It's like, it's so controllable. Oh me gosh. <laughs> yeah, we were in a collar session the other day, and it was just. The collarist was going. And a session, we were in a position that the other go, go, I it was just speckled trees. Lighting was all over the place. This is like an aviary airport. Oh me gosh, oh no. It's not really either or indie or studio, but a guess one of the questions is why you decided to go almost full indie instead of either going with a financier or clawing your way up through the studio system, as some of our other classmates are doing. I think a lot of it is control. Like we have control right now. Yeah, exactly. This is a metaphor. This is all post. Intentional F. Yeah, we added the birds and the hammers after we shot. This was actually really funny. We re actually like in the middle of nowhere. It's really creepy. This is green screen. We re improving off nothing. And then we just. Yeah the sirens. But yeah, I think a lot of its control in a number of ways, but mostly because ironically, as you know, in this industry, people don't have a lot of imagination, so you could give them a script, and you could say like, here's what I want to do, here's exactly this, this, here's the cast, here's everything. Just throw me two hundred grand, which means nothing to a lot of people. And they would just say no or not get it. So I think a lot of it is just let's make it. 
then no imagination. Here's the movie. I mean, it definitely is a starting point, and it's a gamble in a lot of ways, but at the same time, I don't really know of any other way to do it than using the siren. Oh, wait, I just had a heart attack. That's why they recoming. I'm dead. Forgot to tell you. Ye, yeah. it's the studio system coming for us. If you want it done right, do it yourself. Do it with as much control as you can and then hope for the best. Hope it turns out, but that's like anything. You don't have control ultimately. But at least you have a movie to show for it instead of a script. Because I know a lot of times and I was frustrated with this and a lot of people are. Is you can have a great script that you believe in, but it's even hard to get your friends to read it and get notes. It feels like homework. Yeah, because we were talking about this the other day, nobody cares until everybody cares. And this is something, people please stop asking me to read your scripts and your novels. It's not cool. Whenever I say it's a skilled labor, it is. Especially for us, we both have master's degrees. Asking for feedback, it's time-consuming, and it's kind of a job. There's a reason people get paid for that. Yet, it's still, and it's also, you know, a lot of people want to, I'll say, I'm going to work with Spielberg one day, but it is all about your peers and coming up together with your peers. So, you know, have your friends and people whose opinions you trust. I mean, yeah, it's great to have somebody with a lot of know-how read something, but they also don't to get your voice as much. They might not be able to be as prescriptive or as helpful as maybe somebody who knows you better. But at the end of the day, you re really just fighting a losing battle, trying to get your thing read. I think it depends on your goal, but I think also it's really hard to get people again, if they don't to know you, unless they re an agent and they re actively looking, then yeah, it is totally fighting a losing battle. Especially in Hollywood, where like you said, people are interested in ideas, they re not really interested in quality. Yeah, I, I mean... I even had a lot of situations when we crewed up for Bullet County where, you know, I was going to have a meeting with, say, a costume designer or something, send them the script, have a meeting with them, and they had even read it. So, you know, at the point that people who you could employ, especially in a lot of cases it was going to be their first feature as that department head, and they re not even reading it, you know. Like, it's stuck to get people to read your work, for sure. Yeah, and it's like it's not necessarily a reflection on your work, but I think you need to understand that it's like, while it kind of sucks, because you know, it's like you, by the very nature of the creative act, you have to care way more than is rational. It's so hard working, like, just working for so long on a thing. And it kind of own thing that if you re going to go anywhere, you have to accept that nobody cares. Even like your mother, like nobody cares. Nobody cares. Until everybody cares. Right? And they all care for selfish reasons. For fame or, you know, for their own betterment or money or something. But like, yeah, I mean, even you know, you find out even running, you know, like a Kickstarter or something. You, re-essentially trying to get your cast and crew to care about getting the movie funded and finished. And even then, like the percentage of people that care is a huge drop-off, and they re old people who worked on the movie and gave you know, many months off their lives to it. So even then, yeah. It's just important to, to remember that you've been in this bubble, this creative bubble, and nobody else has that perspective. Yeah, exactly. I think that there's maybe a little. 
it's kind of not really helping anyone this sort of you know people are going to care because you re special when you know the reality is people are you know like you said it's selfish and there's nothing really wrong with that because you know we all got places to be and people to do but yeah it's kind of this weird balance of having perspective on what we re talking about of nobody's going to care as much about your work as you are but your job is to make them care as much as possible like enough to re your work or watch your movie or work on your movie in some degree and it is hard and you re not always going to pull it off but at least i mean that's how you get a movie made you get people to care enough either for money purposes or to further their career or because they really passionately believe in it and you know in the indie world it's not for money so you re really fighting and a filled battle to get people who care about whatever you view know written so with all that in mind how do you stay motivated um alcohol i mean besides that besides the obvious liquid courage i have to think that i have something to say something to say in a different way than i've seen before it's not like reinventing the wheel or anything but you know you hear a lot of movie pitches like you know like it was saying the shining meets no country for old men or whatever it is like i haven't quite seen that movie so that's new somewhat and i think a lot of it is just um believe it it sounds hippy dippy but believe in yourself like you really do have to believe in yourself because there will come points where nobody else will and you either use that to keep going or it'll kill you you know or you'll stop doing it and you know you sometimes it takes realistic expectations and you think maybe this isn't for me but i think a lot of it is ivy found and i think we've talked about this before you kind of get shark brained a lot and you just don't even think about it it's like at the point that you just can do nothing else and you have to go that then there's really no second guessing because you re just doing it you re almost the robot no i think that's necessary to me it's necessary like you have to shark brain sometimes and i think a lot of people get hung up on the what will people think ye yeah, ye yeah, don't and that is you know it's like fear is the mind killer it's that you know don to get hung up on that even if it's just like is this problematic are people going to hate em? you know i mean don to be a racist but well because you re always going to have to defend yourself you re always going to have to you know people air going to say take that scene out or it's not worth shooting or take it out of the movie or the score should be this way and not that way and you know yeah they might present a good case and you might say ye yeah, you know because you want to field ideas but if it's something you really want in there for whatever reason stick to your guns you know if you can has that been a process to actually figure out how or were you always kind of there no it's always a process because i think a lot of it is you don't want to remain open-minded enough to take good ideas but you also don't want to lose sight of what it is that you redoing or what you re trying to say for this one you know for me being so involved in it like a wrote directed it my producing partner and a kind of co-produced it in terms of you know pre-production and that kind of thing and pulling a lot of our resources so we were you made that joke about the aviary now we can't stop now we can't yeah yeah i can't unhear it sorry i just want that dish to be a laser and to shoot just a plain killer yeah 
plain killer you all show you to wreck me student film this is for youtube this is an amateur hour i think we really like the kind of defending yourself versus fielding ideas from other people really came to fruition in the editorial process so when you get to editorial you be spent money on certain things you view no acted your heart out you ve written scenes that you really like so there were several scenes in it that wrote there was a scene you really liked and it was a monologue that me character had and i actually think i acted pretty well in it but we cut it out you know because you re really like it just doesn't further the movie it's slowing it down for pace reasons there was another scene that was one of the most expensive scenes we shot and we cut it out you know and it's all in service of that movie at the end of the day so for all those aspiring indie filmmakers out there what advice do you have now that you re almost on the other side of having a finished product i mean the advice is simple if you believe in it enough just really don to stop and do it don to do it don to do it i don't need the competition for one she's just like i don't want to see your white supremacist manifesto to be honest i've seen enough curb stomping jesus christ never give up on your dreams it's true though because i think the other thing is like i think people really have a hard time with this idea that the first thing out of the gate is going to be your breakout rather than just be like you said you've already shot a feature before you did five hundred forty six you were at husk for several years this isn't your first rodeo plus you actually worked in the industry yeah it's a lot of it i mean you hate to be so nebulous but it is all a learning process and i know that you know we've all learned lessons and made the next movie better it may not be a better film overall but there may have been things that you be done better overall and it's all a continuum and so like you say you your first thing is not going to be the best most likely unless you re you know some savant there's a part of me that wishes it could find my phantom of the opera fan fiction from two thousand one well at least i can have that right now i'm doing a live reading you like we were saying you have to believe in yourself you have to work really hard but you also have to not think about it too much ye and just go on or top a lot and really work hard and that is a skill it is hard work and i think it's just like it's sewn off those skills that you know it's not like you it's not like nirvana like you reach it like it. i'm here it's like you it's always kind of a process to just stay like sane through the process of creating and you know care way too much and accept that nobody cares until everybody cares ye like do you know anybody who's been successful in this industry that hasn't worked there as off i don't to know of any i mean unless it's you i can think of a few people who like maybe you were our legacies ye legacy people let's put it that way legacy people maybe didn't torque as i mean they think they did but sure ye but i mean in general like a lot of the people a v worked with or no war respect i mean they just worked really hard ye like rianne he was always like kind of all like psychonauts ye he worked really hard like i remember like looking at him and being like no i never could do like you know just the motivation like i mean i look at his success and i'm just not really terribly surprised just because of like 
Yi. He was just really, really high energy. Yi. And I don't feel like I ever saw him be like. I have saw. Really? I mean, because what is it that there? So that kind of adage that you make it in this industry because you just outlast everybody else, you know. And you and a both know a ton of people who we went to busk with who aren't in the industry anymore. They move back or they just fell out of love with it for whatever reason. For Ye, because I, honestly, like, because I did work in post for a while like you did, and part of the reason why I decided I was going to leave the industry side of things and do writing and YouTube full time was just because I didn't have the passion for it, especially post production, and I was like, I can't have as two things. Yeah, and it's not a sign of failure either. I mean, Ivy tried so many things that Ivy had a passion for, and just. Ew. It's not for me, you know, and there's no harm in it. Bullet County will be out whenever the, I guess, the end of the festival process. Ye. Yeah. That could be another conversation. Oh, me, ye, ye. It's just kind of seeing where it goes, but so far, everybody who's seen it likes it, and it's all they can hope for. Well, congratulations on finishing. Thank you. That in and of itself is like, but all ain't even no. It's a bit, you know. It's you know high five. Thank you. Anything buried out there is meat to stay buried. David, you re at Mr. Pictures Film on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Yes. With your co producer and also. We re getting a YouTube thing going, but it's ye. Slow. We've been too busy on this movie. I know, I know. We re also on you porn. Just look for us. Mr. Dishes. Not Pornhub. No, not Pornhub. Because their search interface is so much better. Ye really. Ye. Come to think of it, we should get on Pornhub. Ye. What are you doing? They have better comments. Also, the link to his Kickstarter is below. It's like, depending on when you see this, it should be still going for another couple days if you want to support indie film. Ye. So if you want to see some scenes from the movie that are almost completed, go to the update section in Kickstarter and there's some scenes in there. All right, great. Well, David, hopefully we all be having a different conversation five or ten years from now that we all look back on this and laugh at the time we chatted in the aviary. I'll still be doing Michael Bay impressions. Yeah, we need to get your dollar sign hat back. Well, thank you for coming. Thank you.